Welcome home. It's Irish Family History with curious news and notes. Celebrating our fourth year of this podcast at the Irish Roots Cafe, where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. One of six broadcast series from the head school at irishroots.com. I'm Michael Laughlin, your host, publisher of rare Irish books and uh, information on every county in Ireland since 1978. Be sure to read our blog, complete with links to click on from this podcast and search our master index and books for free. Molly, wet the tea, Katie, bar the door, Sweeney, clear that floor and bring out the Irish dancers. It's time we get this show on the road. Ooh, well, that's right. It is show number 166 of the Irish Family History and Genealogy podcast. Among today's topics at the head school here, uh, the family name of the day is Caldwell, the Irish Book of the Month, Surnames in Ireland, Searching for O'Connor, Mason, Pierce, and Lawler. Number four, uh, Curious News and Notes, how about the Irish in Argentina? Number five, the web page of the month. Uh, ordnance survey maps. Number six, uh, curious news and notes. How about a Chinese storyteller and what's he got to do with the Irish? Number seven, the one minute podcast. And that would be uh, Father Quinn and the old neighborhood around Browns and some of the stories he had to tell. And he even tells where his branch of the Quins came from. So uh, if you're a Quinn or if you're interested in those old Irish neighborhoods or parishes, uh, stay tuned for that too. Hey, as lo- before I move on to the notes of the week, remember we've got uh, seven podcast feeds. We got shows on history and song and. Uh, genealogy, the whole work. So keep your eye up on that. We've got them all over at iTunes, most of them at iTunes. I got maybe 100 or 150 that are just on the website. Uh, just to entice you back there, you know. And uh, just to let you know what's going on. And now we're going to talk about the notes for the week and what's happening at the Irish Roots Cafe. Uh, number one, I just read that the Irish DNA code had been sequenced for the first time with uh, the mapping of 3.1 billion subunits of DNA, and that was done by the uh, Conway Institute at University College Dublin. Boy, that will sure be interesting to see what turns up. Uh, I bet you we're going to learn more and more over the years here, Uh, and we've got a link to that on the blog. Uh, Number two, we're finishing up recording for the Irish Song broadcast this year. And that's the Sean No Season 3. And it'll take another week or so to get it all edited, but I think I might try to come out with the first uh, the first uh, introductory show uh, today, as a matter of fact. So be sure to turn in and check that out. Uh, and also see more about the, uh, the season and what we've done before on that uh, uh, Irish song show. Uh, you can check it out on the blog. I got a link right there. And guess what? Renata has started up her uh, Irish language classes again at the Irish Museum for both beginner, beginners and advanced. And she's also sung a song for our podcast season three for this Irish song podcast. And this one is Will You Meet Me at the Rock? And it's in Irish and uh, you're going to have to hear it. The last day to record is the 15th. That's Wednesday. <laughs> Hey, now it's time for the one minute podcast. We're going to listen to uh, Father Quinn here, and we're talking over at the Brown Cyrus Street Festival. Here's an excerpt of what we talked about. And ran home. Hey, do you remember some of the Irish names in the neighborhood from back then? Any name come to mind? The surnames? Well, all right, starting on the corner of the. Gro- uh, the- 34th in Pennsylvania. There were two families of Quinns south of us, and then between them was Coffee Greens. Chief Coffee had been chief of police of Kansas City, Missouri. That irritated me because he always got the same license number every year on his car. Next to him was Murphy's, then Sweeney's and Dolan's, then our house. Next to us were the Donahue's. Next to them were Dempsey's. And that was a little beyond, once I got beyond them, that was uh, about as far as my mother let me go. 
So this was really an old-fashioned Irish neighborhood to start out with. Very much so, very much so. And, you know, what do you think that meant? It meant that uh, about 9.20, everybody walked off their porch to go to the 9.30 mass. I think there were only two privately owned automobiles on our block. Uh, it meant a lot of uh, neighborhood cohesion, a lot of uh, mutual support. I re realized that the first time I came out on the front porch, anybody who could see me knew my name. So there were very few strangers around. Well, hey, that's really interesting. I wonder, uh, did you keep in contact with many of those old family names? Do you see them today yet? Some yes, some no. Most no from the, from the block and from the immediate neighborhood, not many. From grade school at Redemptress, I stay in touch with many of my first grade classmates. In fact, this coming Tuesday, I'll officiate at the funeral of Mrs. Helen Shadow, who would have been 103 had she made it to this September. She and my mother were good friends, and she was the mother of one of my best friends in grade school, Joe Shadow, who has since died. Hey, do you know where your uh, line of the Quins would come from? Yes, Grandfather Quinn came from uh, the province of Arama. He got here with three of his brothers in New York about 1880. Well, thanks to uh, Father Quinn and the Browns uh, Irish Street Festival and Carrie and John there, uh, now it's time for the Book of the Day. Well, let me see. Uh, before we start with the official Book of the Day with surnames of Ir in Ireland, uh, here's Aaron Sons, Irish Arrivals in Atlantic Canada to 1863 by Terence M. Punch, and it's volume number four. I've announced some of those other volumes on here before, but I thought I'd let you know this one has just come out. Uh, uh, Genealogical Publishing Company uh, sent me a copy, so be sure to check that out by Terence M. Punch. You, I'm sure you can find it on the web and at uh, uh, all those places that sell books on the web. But here's a little note I saw on the inside cover. I just had time to read, and it says that an old guy in 1885 went through Colchester County, Nova Scotia, found an old tombstone, and here it talked about Mrs. Margaret Cavanaugh and also uh, Joni Murphy, her distant relative, age 92. And after a long life together, and, and uh, Mr. Lawrence Cavanaugh uh, had, was the uh, husband of Miss, Mrs. Margaret before he died, but anyway, the one of them died in 1778 in the month of November, and the Margaret on the 14th day, and the next day, Joni died. So, hey, that was back in 1778. One died on uh, the 14th, and one died on the 15th. They had known each other for so long, uh, maybe there just wasn't any more point of going on. Uh, but now let's get back to the... Uh, um, uh, surname Book of Irish Surnames, that's Surnames in Ireland by Edward Nefsey. And by the way, we saw this, Ed. I talked to Ed, and he said he saw it was number 47 on the uh, wish list on uh, Amazon. So that's pretty good. Somebody's got it, been out looking for it. We want to know whether well, it's right here, plus they have it on Amazon. And uh, this book has 200 family location maps. That's where he ma maps out the location of each family name given. And uh, really, it's the first book to do it quite like this. And that makes it valuable, not just for what's in it, but for what it was at the time, too. Now, each family has its own map, and you'll be able to instantly identify the locations and how many people were in which portion of Ireland or which county. And that can be important when putting together those theories on finding your family or when speculating about historical things, too. Uh, what kind of names are in there? Well, I've listed all 200 names on the blog, but names like Adamson and McBride and Delaney and uh, McAvoy, McFall, McGee, uh, Gahagan and McGonagall, O'Hagan, Ray, Reagan, Smith, Tool, Whitley, McWilliams, Wilson. Uh, uh, there, there's just too many to list, but it's well worth your time to check this one out if you're one of those names. Now, if you're not one of those names, it might be a nice thing to have anyway. You might run on to something that concerns your family or clan or county. And your friends would sure like to see it on the coffee table so they had something to do while you were out there making some tea. Oh, I'm telling you, now it's time for the Magnificent Seven. But remember, uh, we've got another story link up coming up. Uh, somebody was pregnant for 25 years and which Irish family surname holds that record? 
We'll get back to that later. Number one, Lori McCown uh, Thomason of Quebec, Canada, your county Antrim and Belfast book has shipped. Mary Carroll of Anchorage, Alaska, your carry book, birth index, and Irish families have shipped. Harold T. Duff, Duffy of Crestwood, Illinois, your county Meath genealogy book shipped. Number four, Intelligistics of Corinth, Texas, your cork genealogy book has shipped. Uh, number five, Mary Louise Mason of Staffordshire, England. Welcome as a new member. She's looking for the O'Connors of Kerry, Mason, and Pierce. Number six, Les Warren of Waikato, New Zealand. Welcome as a new member. Looking for Lawler from County Kerry, and uh, they might have come from County Leash, too. You don't know. And then number seven, Donald R. Frontal of India Atlantic, Florida. Your book of Irish families has shipped. And, you know, this segment always, I have to remember to say thank you to each and every member and each and every person that buys a book because you pay the bill. You keep this podcast going. We started out in 2006. We were the very first Irish family podcast series ever to come about in the entire world. And you're responsible because you're the only one out there helping me, and I sure do appreciate it. And remember, we've got uh, this podcast, if you're listening to my voice, We've got a blog reader where a computer voice reads the blog. And we've got the blog itself, which can be read any time, night or day. And we have a little bit of different things on that blog, too. So it pays to check it out and lots of links you can just click on. Well, now it's time for... The Irish family name of the day. And the name today is Caldwell. And this uh, family history is in honor of member Teresa Caldwell of Long Valley, New Jersey. And she says she's searching for William Caldwell, born 1815 in Ireland and married uh, Eliza somebody. I mentioned that a week or two ago. And uh, in 1837, uh, says Ireland, uh, let's see, one daughter, Mary, born 1838. And after that, they left for Nova Scotia and then to Philadelphia. And she wants to know more. So that's what we've got down here. This might help you put in contact. Several spellings of the name that W-E-L-L can end the name or W-A-L-L. Sometimes the name's even linked to Colvin or Colwell, C-O-L-W-E-L-L. Got the, the spellings on the blog. And that's from uh, a couple of different variant spelling groups from the guide to the various spellings of Irish families' names. Now, if we take a quick look at the history of the name, you're going to find that it's a well-known name in Ireland, but it's also well-known to be of foreign origins. So it's not an old, ancient Irish uh, family name. That means it's settled in here over time. And uh, some native Irish families might have also adopted that name too. So you might have to do a little research to be sure, or maybe even a little DNA test. And uh, when it's of foreign origins, the name is likely to have come from Scotland or England. And if it's of possible Irish origins, uh, you've got names like Horish and Horisky, <clears throat> County Tyrone up there in the north. And they've been changed to the surname of Caldwell on occasion. Uh, and also in Cavan, uh, Culavan and Cullivan have reportedly been changed to Caldwell on occasions too. So you never know. Maybe they had to change the name to inherit a fortune or, or to buy a horse or to stay alive. You know, you just can't be sure. It pays to do some research and some county history sometimes give you some leads on that. Uh, now, you know, you're going to find it in the Irish uh, uh, Book of Arms, the Irish family coats of arms for that name. And uh, a brief search of that book shows that the Irish Book of Arms gives Caldwell of New Grange, County Meath, and that family was originally of Scottish heritage, and they uh, earlier had settled in County Dublin. And then they branched out, so you might see some of the name uh, in several areas of Ireland. That's pretty common, especially with those nobility. You never know where they might move and what castle they might establish. Uh, but that gives you one location to look for in the Irish Book of Arms uh, if you're a Caldwell just a hunting for your uh, history and heritage. Hey, you know what else we got coming up later? Uh, something about the Doherty family. They hold the world's record. And uh, you might be interested in that, all you other Doherty families now. Uh, what else we got? Oh, yes, the free master index at www.irishroots.com. You type your surname in there, and uh, the your name will come up with all the books your family name is found in. So 
We've got a few examples uh, for you today of the Caldwell surname, and we'll have those in just about, uh, what, uh, six seconds? Well, taken from the webpage at irishroots.com, we find H. Caldwell in County Fermanagh and a Louth genealogy book. We find R. Caldwell in County Kildare, Wicklow, and Carlow genealogy book. And we find uh, just a simple surname of Caldwell listed in the index to the Missouri Irish book. And we also find reference to the Caldwell Settlement in uh, uh, the third volume of the American Irish Historical Society. That would have been just around 1900, give or take a year or two. And you also find Caldwell listed in the Malaysian Families of Ireland book, not because it's an ancient Malaysian family that settled in Ireland, but because that book also lists uh, the other families in Ireland and where they were thought to have come from. Uh, so, yes, even though it says Malaysian families of Ireland, a genealogical history, it also gives uh, what they thought the origins were back in the 1800s, what the legends were of where the family came from, and perhaps uh, the earliest time that they were aware of. But you have to take it all with a grain of salt because every researcher finds different records and you never know who turns up the one that relates directly to you. But that's your job as a researcher to dig in there and find out. Do I hear that whistle calling? Hey, here comes the uh, uh, Around the World in Irish Ways. Ah, here we've got some web pages and videos coming up. Uh, a Caldwell genealogy web page, owned and operated by a Caldwell, of course. We got that. That's caldwellgenealogy.com. Got a link on the blog. Number two, Castle Caldwell, uh, Castle Caldwell Forest. That's in County Fermanagh, Northern Ireland. Uh, link on the blog. That's on YouTube, so it's a nice old video. Number three, Matchmaking in Ireland at Liz Dune Varna, the world's biggest matchmaking festival, and that's just been happening. Uh, you've got Ireland's only official matchmaker on video. Talked a little bit about this uh, uh, last week. And uh, I tell you, there was enough, enough interest. I thought I'd at least I'll let you see him on the video. So link on the blog. It's a YouTube. Number four, Helen Kelly, Irish genealogist uh, with Tourism Ireland, apparently. Uh, she's also got a video. We got a link on that. And uh, she might give some of you beginners some tips on Irish research. It's always good to listen to more than one person. Uh, that's especially true uh, if you're listening over the web or the Internet. You never know how reliable that information is. Not that you should have any doubts about me, however. <laughs> but that's, uh, that's the four videos around the world in Irish ways with web pages and videos of the month. We've got some more web pages coming up here in just a second. Uh, but I want to make sure that you all know the uh, Irish Song and Recitation Festival is uh, getting ready to blast off. If you know anybody who can sing in the old Irish way, uh, Shan knows, so to speak. Uh, have, even Shan knows Nua, that's a little variation on it. Have them enter and uh, get a hold of me before Wednesday, before the 15th. That's only two more days from now, and we can get them on the show. If not, they'll just have to wait a couple of years before we do this uh, particular theme again. Oh, it's curious news and notes from Ireland today. Uh, number one, the Irish and Argentina connection. Uh, now, his uncle said that there were more Ganleys in Argentina than there were in Ireland. And most of the Irish in, in Argentina, they say, come from County Longford and County Westmeath. Uh, that's due to a specific immigration pattern. But, you know, there were more Murphys maybe in New York City than there were in Dublin for a while. Uh, that might be stretching it, but you get the idea. Number two, uh, top ten outlaws, Irish outlaws and gangsters, along with photos... And they start, of course, with Billy the Kid, who was really born William McCarty. So uh, check that out. That's on the, uh, uh, we've got a link on the blog. It's at Irish Central. Number three, a guidebook to Irish music festivals. Now, it's only 40 pages, so I don't know how many festivals they got. I think, uh, I think USA could fill up 40 pages just in, in, in itself. But uh, it looks like a good little guidebook. Got a link on the blog. Number four. 
Ordnance Survey maps, uh, Ireland and Northern Ireland. Just in case you've forgotten about those maps, they can help you pinpoint some uh, uh, specific geographical areas and understand the relationships between some of these names of place names that you don't quite understand. Uh, and they're very official and very detailed, so got a link to that on the blog. Number five, uh, an Irish boy has become the first outsider to make Chinese storyteller finals. Tiernan Murphy did it with his rendition of Little Red Riding Hood in the Mandarin language. Now, that'd be tough, but does it surprise anybody that an Irishman couldn't be a good storyteller in any language on this earth? Uh, boy, but old Tiernan sure did it, did it, and congratulations to him. There's a whole article on it, and uh, uh, take a look to the link on the blog. I sure enjoy reading that one. Uh, number six. A super mom. Yes, she was pregnant for 25 years continuously. She said, I never complained. Ah, that's a nice Irish woman for you. 19 children for this family, and Mary Frances Doherty of Donegal is the winner. 37 grandchildren and one great-grandchild now on record. We've got a link to that on the blog. Yes, it's true, and uh, I think I read she was, gosh, she was around 20 or so, give or take a few years when she first got married, had the first child, and then just never stopped, was pregnant at least part of every year after that. And, uh, boy, I think now they're grown and she has time to relax. And I'd say it's a well, or well, well-earned thing. Uh, well, that about does it for the day. We've been real busy here doing all these song things, and I've been looking up some new genealogy things and improving the web page. You haven't seen it all yet, but more of it's coming. Uh, if you've got any ideas or thoughts or anything you want to add or anything you want to help with, you know, we could use the help. I'm telling you. <laughs> sure, we got Sweeney at the door, but he's busy with what he's doing. And uh, uh, Katie, she's doing all right, too. But, you know, she's busy doing what she's got. And she's she's having a hard time just living on those tips. So uh, we all need a little help. If you got any good ideas, pass it on to us and uh, have a good day. That's all for today, folks. Joseph, warm up those pipes. Remember, we have a broadcast series on Irish song and recitation, on local history of the Irish in America, and on 2,000 years of Irish history, as well as on the counties, and something special coming up on Irish language, I hope. Uh, we've got all that and more at our head school at irishroots.com. And you know, we've been known to appear, exhibit, teach, and even sing for your special events. Be sure to book in advance if it's important. And write me at my American address at Irish Roots Cafe, Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. Leave a message by phone at 816-256-3360. Reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com. Skype me at the Irish Roots Cafe. Uh, get me on MySpace, Facebook, Twitter, and Irish Central. Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way, a big thank you to all of our members. And away. <laughs>